SSL Family to Apple Simple Suburban Living, and today we're doing an update on aquaponics system. So it's been quite a while since I've uh, talked about or shown uh, what's going on with the aquaponics system here in the in the basement. And so I thought I would kind of take you through and just show you some of the changes that I'm going to do today, um, what's been happening with the system, good and bad, and some future plans for some updates and some upgrades and changes and things like that. Um, so I'll take you into the uh, the bad news first, and I'll show you what's been going on with the fish. Okay, so here is the one of the tanks here, and you'll notice not too many fish. There's only three fish left in this one, and I think that there are three fish left, or two fish left in this one. And what's been happening, and this has been happening for quite some time, it's been probably six months. It started when I put the tilapia in here, and all the tilapia have died. Um, I don't know if there was a disease that they had or a disease that the feeder goldfish had or something that happened here, but very, very slowly, um, just about every, you know, once a week, maybe twice a week, I'll come and fish out, one of, one of the fish will die. Um, seems like they start to hang out on the bottom, like that one down there. And they'll just kind of start to hang out down there and, uh, you know, after about a week, they, they die. Um, the tilapia died about the same way. They died a little more quickly. Um, that you know, just about a few weeks after I put the tilapia in here, they started dying off. And I thought it was because of water quality issues and other things. But with only you know having whatever six fish in here right now, versus I used to have 80. I actually started with 100 fish, 100 feeder goldfish in here. And. Uh, you know, with only having this many fish left in here, and I've tested the water, I always test the water quality and everything. The pH is fine, the nitrates and nitrates, and ammonia and everything's been fine. There's, this is just crystal clear water. There's nothing, I don't add anything to it. I haven't put anything in it. Um, I don't do it. I haven't done any nutrient supplementation in months, and I haven't done anything. Uh, so I'm kind of, uh, the only thing I can think of is there's some disease issue going on here that uh, is just slowly killing these suckers off. So. Um, I'm going to be doing some big, pretty big redesigns on the aquaponics system, and I'm going to kind of start fresh. I'm going to take these and move them out to a goldfish pond, uh, whatever is left of them anyway, and uh, I'm going to kind of start fresh. I'm going to clean everything out and up and um, get some new, probably tilapia, another batch, and see if we can get them to, to go in here. So, But that's what's been going on with the fish. We're down to six. <laughs> uh, I think the last time we did an update, we had probably 40 something and uh, you know they just been slowly dying off so too bad just kind of do a real quick update on the kale the kale has been you know still growing awesome um, what I found with the kale too is if you cut it off at the top it'll actually just repopulate all the branches along the bottom here so I just keep harvesting all along the bottom um, because they'll start the, the lower branches they'll start to die off because they don't get they get totally blocked out by the there's no, no light gets to them so uh, I just harvest them all the way up to the top, and then after the plants start to get too tall, I'll clip them off at the top. I did that with some of the back ones there. And um, you know, they'll start to regrow branches on the bottom, and you know, start to harvest those ones off as well. So this has been super productive. I mean, you can get as much kale as you want out of this grow bed. I probably don't need this many in here. A lot of it goes to waste. We just don't use it fast enough. But uh, this stuff has been growing great. It tastes, it tastes awesome. Um, I'm not a huge kale fan, but this stuff is very mild. And uh, this is a blue kale variety, and it's very, very good. Okay, so this is uh, the second grow bed, and this is the green, or bell peppers, uh, red peppers, whatever you want to call them. Um, and uh, these have been doing great. Same, same old story with these. I've done a lot of videos on the, on the peppers. These are kind of my favorite thing to grow in here. They continually produce. Um, you'll see there they've just gone through a production stage um, all the leaves will start to die off new leaves will grow through as this one's kind of in that stage right now and then we'll, we'll start to get another set of peppers so uh, right now is probably the only time this whole summer that we haven't had a continuous supply of peppers we just used them all off of here we'll cut them off small if we want or we'll let them grow a little bit larger there's a couple bigger ones in the back and the, the larger plant in the next bed has it has quite a few on it so they're not very big plants. They don't seem to grow much bigger. Um, I've got real powerful lights here, and uh, they just continue to produce. So one of the things I'm gonna do is just move these over. Um, I'm gonna kind of consolidate. I took out the banana peppers. They just did not, not do very well in here. Um, you know, I got like 
probably 10 banana peppers in the last year. <laughs> so not, not real productive. So I took the banana peppers out. I'm going to consolidate all these bell peppers into one grow bed to the, in the next one over. And I'm going to use this for herbs. So I've got some cilantro and some oregano. I'm going to move in some basil in. Um, and I'm just going to uh, rosemary. And uh, I'm going to try to get some parsley growing and some other things. So I'll be able to continue to harvest some herbs down here as well. So uh, we'll get these torn out and plant it over to the next one. So this is the, the first time I've really dug through this bed since I put the worms in here. Um, gosh, I don't know how long ago it's been, maybe eight months ago or six months ago. And uh, here's a little baby one. So it looks like they are they are multiplying in here and they seem to be doing well. I think I might have hurt this one a little bit moving the rocks around, but um, this is a good sign. So this means that they are, are productive and they are, uh, they are living in here okay and, and doing their thing. So this is uh, grow bed number three with all the new pepper plants in there are moved over. So all the all the pepper plants are now consolidated in one bed. They're a little bit packed in there, but I think that they'll grow up and create their own kind of canopy. Um, and uh, this way I can have all the flowering plants in one grow bed so I can adjust my lights accordingly. And uh, the other, all the rest of the plants in here are going to be leafy greens. I'm not going to do any other flowering plants right now except for these. Um, this plant back here, the biggest one, this is all one plant. Uh, that's been in here now for almost two years, going on two years, and it still keeps going through cycles and producing peppers. So um, that one at one point had uh, over 20, 20 peppers on it, just that one plant. So um, definitely a good, good producers and continuous one, so it's pretty cool. All right, so this is that, that last grow bud. I've just been kind of sprouting some seeds in here. And uh, this summer has just gotten away from me. I, the, the aquaponic system definitely got neglected. So this stuff's been down here for a month, probably longer than that, almost a month and a half. It's been ready to plant, I just haven't done it. So what do we have in here? Some iceberg lettuce, uh, a different a gourmet blend. It's just a couple different colors of lettuce, types of lettuce. Some um, Paris uh, romaine, I believe it is, or Paris white, and uh, some spinach. So I'm going to be planting all that out in this bed here, give it a little more space to grow, and hopefully this stuff will, will take off and, and do pretty well. And I also have some herbs. I've been having trouble um, sprouting parsley for some reason. I think it's the seeds I have. Uh, I do have cilantro growing in here. This is some cilantro here. I've got some little rosemaries. I don't know if you can see if I got my hand out of the way. Uh, little rosemaries in here. A couple of those. So those grow real slow, but once they get going, they do pretty well. And then some oregano here um, that we're going to be using quite a bit up here since our tomatoes are, are coming in and we're ready to make a lot of tomato sauces and things like that too. So, um, But anyway, so this is going to get planted as well. I'll run through that real quick and then I'll show you some of the, kind of talk a little bit about some of the changes that I'm going to do to the system in the coming months and kind of a big overhaul of the whole aquaponic system here. We got all these planted in here. The uh, thing I, I learned the last time I planted out lettuce is that um, I planted it a lot closer together last time. This is even probably still too a little bit close together, but the thing that you want to remember when you're when you're harvesting or, or growing lettuce in, inside like this is that you really need to keep on it. Harvest those young leaves um, off the plant and it will continue to grow almost indefinitely. Uh, especially down here in the basement, it's perfect for lettuce and things like that because it's got a nice cool um, uniform temperature all the time down here. So. Um, the spinach doesn't look too good, it kind of got shaded out in that little seed tray, so we'll see if that uh, even survives or not. Spinach hasn't done too good in here before, um, but the lettuces definitely do, so that should be a good uh, constant source of salads for us. Alright, we're back to back to grow bed number two where we took all those pepper plants out of earlier, and uh, I've got some basil plants here from our garden that I'm going to cut down to size here. Do a real heavy pruning on these just so we've got a small plant. We'll use all this for some recipes in the kitchen. And we'll get these planted in here. They've got nice, nice strong thick roots. So and we've 
got some cilantro here that will be uh, it was from that seed tray we'll be planting in here as well cilantro gets pretty big so I'm gonna try to put this towards the back the basil gets pretty big too so the, the key with this stuff is just to keep up with harvesting it once you let it get out of control it's hard to reel it back in these ones are kind of little so I don't know how well they'll do but we'll put them in here anyway so one of the tricks that uh, actually somebody kind of taught me last year when I was planting things is uh, it's, it's a good idea to take the bell siphon out of your grow bed and let the level fill up to its highest level and uh, I keep forgetting to do that but uh, it makes it real easy when you dig in you can see exactly where where the water level is going to be so you know how deep to put your roots and the rocks move around a lot easier when you're taking things in you know taking things out and putting things in so just makes it a lot easier especially when you're dealing with this rock that I have it's real, real coarse rock so and I've got some rosemary growing here in the actual grow bed um, I've also got these two little ones I showed you earlier they are super small so I'm gonna wait until those get a little bigger in the dirt here before I transplant them um, rosemary just grows so slow so I'm gonna try to get uh, got one outside I'm gonna move in so I'm trying to get four or five of them in here and that should supply us with enough all right, so I've got everything planted out kind of the way I want it now. Um, I've got all my leafy greens over here, a couple different types of lettuces and spinach. That's going to be a, a nice little salad bed. I've got this one here with my uh, bell peppers, which are my only flowering crops that I have in here right now. So I can uh, adjust my lights accordingly in that bed. Uh, I've got all my herbs in this one. I've got basil, cilantro, oregano, and the rosemary in here right now. I'm going to try to add some parsley as well. And so that will be kind of my herbs bed. All continual harvest type stuff. And then I've got the crazy kale bed here that's been growing for six months or more uh, and just been an excellent producer for us. This is just the best kale that we've ever had. So um, awesome stuff going on here. And I'm real excited to get down back in here. The summer's been crazy. I haven't spent a lot of time down here. Um, I've had the issues with the fish going on and I've just kind of been putting off dealing with it uh, until, you know, now. Uh, gardening season is coming to an end and it's time for me to get down here and really uh, start to dig into this thing. So, uh, some plans to change the system around a little bit. I'm planning on doing something different with the fish tanks. I'm going to try to get like a, maybe a watering trough or uh, some other kind of uh, IBC tote or something like that. Something that's a little bit lower so I can access the fish tanks a little bit easier. I'm going to redesign the plumbing over here. I'm going to get a new uh, filter or a swirl filter built uh, for the system that's a little bit better and deeper. Uh, I'm also going to lower my grow beds down as far as I can get them to the ground and I'm going to build a sump tank into the bottom of the grow beds so it's all one unit that can be moved if I need to. And uh, then some other things, I'm going to try some new lighting and uh, I've got a lot of things coming up this winter. So stay tuned for those kind of changes and updates um, and I'm going to drop some plans and things like that which I'll share with you guys and talk more about why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm changing what I'm changing with the system. Um, all in all, it's been running great. We still come down and harvest peppers. Even though I've got the issues with the fish going on, uh, you know, it's just been one of those things that it still keeps running. This thing's pretty automated, so I don't really need to do anything with it. So, but uh, hopefully that guy's uh, that kind of, uh, you know, shared the update of what's going on with the aquaponics system. I'm sorry about the length of time it's been since I've done an aquaponics update. Uh, I'm going to have some nutrient deficiency uh, guide types of videos coming out as well. I know I promised those a while ago, so I'll get back into that as well. Uh, if you guys have questions or comments about the system, please let me know if you're starting to design your own system or setting something up. Let me know if I can help in any way. Hit us up on Facebook, follow us on Pinterest and Twitter and Instagram. We've got all kinds of different things that relate to all the things we're doing around the, the homestead here uh, on those social media sites. So um, hit that thumbs up, guys. I really appreciate it. Just reach down and hit the thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the video. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. We've got all kinds of things coming up uh, this winter. Uh, wood burning heater type stuff and DIY projects and wood roofing stuff I'm going to be doing in, indoors here, more on the pantry uh, and all kinds of other things coming up. So stay tuned for that. As always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.